I'd like to tell you about a new form of therapy for pulmonary embolism patients that I have been using for the last two years. Before we show the case and explain the procedure, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the facts of pulmonary embolism. We know that it strikes over 600,000 Americans each year and over a million Europeans. Pulmonary embolism can be categorized into massive, submassive, and minor categories. Massive pulmonary embolism patients usually have a 90-day mortality rate of approximately 50%. These patients present with hemodynamic instability, and the accepted form of therapy is uh, thrombolytic therapy. This is usually the administration of a systemic dose of TPA or another thrombolytic agent, usually 90 to 100 milligrams. This in and of itself carries a high risk of bleeding due to the thrombolytic agent. Submassive uh, pulmonary embolism patients account for about 40%. These patients have a 90-day mortality rate of about 22%. The accepted therapy for these patients is anticoagulation alone. They're usually started on heparin and then converted to Coumadin. The important distinction with this particular uh, category of patients is that they present with right heart enlargement due to the obstructing thrombus. The remainder of these patients uh, present as minor pulmonary embolism patients, and they're usually adequately treated with anticoagulation alone. The important thing I wanted to discuss is the submassive category. It's interesting to note that these patients are hemodynamically stable, and they look quite good. However, they have right heart enlargement. And this is why I feel anticoagulation alone is not adequate for these patients. I believe that we're under-treating these patients and there can be a better form of therapy. And I do believe we have a better way to treat these patients. But first, I'd like to go over some of the medical literature that uh, supports this new form of therapy. Pulmonary embolism patients with right ventricle dysfunction, which was not resolved prior to hospital discharge, were eight times more likely to have a recurrent PE and suffered more than four times the mortality rate than patients whose right ventricular dysfunction was resolved prior to discharge. Mortality risk increases 11-fold for PE patients with an obstructive index greater than 40 percent who are treated solely with anticoagulant therapy. The presence of right ventricular hypokinesis on the baseline echocardiogram was associated with a 57% higher mortality rate at three months, even though most of the patients, approximately 89%, were hemodynamically stable. 44% of pulmonary embolism patients with right heart dysfunction at the time of diagnosis had chronic pulmonary hypertension at one year follow-up. An echocardiographic RV-LV ratio of greater than or equal to 0.9 was shown to be an independent predictive factor for hospital mortality. Pulmonary embolism patients with right heart dysfunction defined as an RV-LV ratio of greater than 0.9 have a significantly higher chance of adverse effects within 30 days. This new therapy that I've been using involves the use of an ultrasonic catheter. This catheter uh, is placed directly into the pulmonary artery and the TPA or any other thrombolytic drug can be delivered directly into the clot. The ultrasound helps break up the clot, which allows the drug to be delivered more deeply into the clot. The patient is given no more than 20 milligrams of TPA over 12 hours. In using this device, we are able to use a lot less of the TPA, and we don't have the bleeding that we see with systemic administration of TPA. I've been using this device with both massive and submassive PE patients. In order to judge the efficacy, of this therapy, a CTA of the chest is obtained prior to treatment and after treatment. The normal RV-LV ratio is 0 0.6 to 0.8. In patients with massive PE, the ratio can be greater than 2 and is usually greater than 1. In submassive PE patients, the ratio is usually greater than 1. We have seen remarkable results with this uh, therapy. Um, patients uh, leave the ICU in uh, less than one day and are discharged from the hospital in less than five days. This is the new standard of care for our hospital in the treatment of massive and submassive pulmonary embolism patients. This catheter is now approved for use in Europe for the treatment of pulmonary embolism. The catheter is not approved for use of pulmonary embolism in the United States. However, it is approved for placement in the pulmonary artery and for the delivery of physician-prescribed fluids. 
a clinical trial will commence shortly in order to gather support for future clinics. What we're going to do today is treat a 60-year-old obese female patient uh, with a massive pulmonary embolism with catheter-directed thrombolysis with an ultrasonic component. The patient was admitted to the emergency room this morning after a syncopal episode and shortness of breath. Uh, a CAT scan was performed which showed a massive saddle pulmonary embolus with extension in the right and left pulmonary arteries. The CAT scan um, obviously shows an enlarged right ventricle with an RV-LV ratio greater than two, and we feel that she is an excellent candidate for this procedure, which is a percutaneous procedure in order to lyse the clot in the pulmonary arteries. Venous access is then obtained in the usual fashion. Once the needle is in place, an 035 guide wire is then inserted under fluoroscopic guidance. Over the guide wire, is inserted a 10 French sheath uh, with two ports. Uh, this allows us single groin access for both of the six French Echos catheters. Uh, we then uh, insert an 035 guide wire with a directional catheter, position this across the tricuspid valve, the pulmonary into the uh, right ventricular outflow tract, and as seen here, into the left pulmonary artery. The uh, wire is left in place, the catheter is removed, and the IDDC, or the Intelligent Drug Delivery Catheter by ECHOS, is inserted over the guide wire and positioned uh, appropriately uh, into the uh, left pulmonary artery. The microsonic delivery catheter is then inserted through the IDDC. The microsonic delivery catheter is composed of ultrasonic transducers spaced one centimeter apart. The catheter, the, the MSD is then secured to the catheter. The uh, second uh, catheter is then inserted through the other port and once again the guide wire with the use of a directional catheter, we like to use an angled pigtail catheter, is put in position in the right pulmonary artery. The catheter is removed, and once again, the intelligent drug delivery catheter is inserted over the 035 wire and positioned appropriately. The guide wire is then removed and the microsonic device is once again inserted and secured to the uh, delivery catheter. With the two catheters in place, the IDDC or intelligent drug delivery catheter and the MSD microsonic device are attached to the cables that will attach to the PT3B ultrasound control unit. The units are then activated, the ultrasonic energy commences, and at this time a bolus dose of TPA is given down each of the catheters. I like to use four milligrams bolus dose down each catheter. After the bolus dose is given, the TPA drip is attached to each of the drug ports, and the uh, patient is brought to uh, the intensive care or coronary care unit for observation. Our patient was typical of the last 28 patients treated in this fashion, demonstrating clinical improvement within one hour of treatment. She was totally asymptomatic at six hours. Our 48-hour follow-up CAT scan shows a marked reduction in thrombus, however, some is still present. What is most interesting in this patient, however, uh, is that the RV-LV ratio is markedly different from the first uh, study. This CAT scan three weeks later shows virtually no thrombus remaining in the pulmonary circulation and the RV-LV ratio now is less than 0.9.
When we talk about the treatment of pulmonary embolism, I think it's very important to uh, define different types of pulmonary emboli. Acute pulmonary embolism should be divided into two groups, massive and submassives. And it's very important to understand and distinguish between the two. Massive pulmonary emboli are associated with hemodynamic unstable patients. Patients usually present in some form of cardiogenic shock. Submassive patients, on the other hand, are hemodynamically stable, yet echocardiogram or CAT scans show evidence of right heart failure. The right ventricular to left ventricular ratio is usually one or greater in these submassive patients. I think what we're showing here is that in addition to the treatment of massive PE patients uh, with the echos catheter, with the ultrasound enhanced thrombolysis, that this same therapy should be used to treat submassive patients. In doing so, I believe that we will prevent the uh, pulmonary hypertension that we see in up to 44% of patients who are discharged with anticoagulation alone. I believe that using this form of therapy will benefit our patients not only in the short term to save lives, but to prevent long-term sequelae from this dreaded disease.